going to be concluded someday for your life and mine. And I hope every one of you can say, I know I'm going to heaven when I leave this world, and I know heaven is my home. Well, as Children's Church is being dismissed, let me invite you to take your Bible and turn with me to the Old Testament book of Malachi. For those of you, maybe if you've not been uh, with us for the entire series, we've been in a series on Positioned for Blessings. Now let me ask you a question as you're taking your Bible and turning to Malachi chapter 3. Would you be able to say, you know, my life is positioned in such a way that God can bless me. He can bring His blessings into my life because I'm doing my best to walk with him. Let me give you an example. A person walks into the doctor's office and he knows that something's not going right and he feels something inside of his body and so he makes an appointment with his doctor. Walks into the doctor's office and the doctor asks a few questions. So could you tell me what you're doing? Are you eating right? Are you exercising? Uh, could you tell me a little bit about what's going on in your body? Now he's not doing that to be nosy but what the doctor is doing is simply this. He's trying to find out as best he can what you're doing on your part if you're doing something to sabotage your body or if there's something else going on that he needs to see into. Would you ever think that you're sabotaging your life from the blessings of God? Have you ever thought of this way that the God in heaven who created you, loves you, gave Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you, he did not want you to miss life at its best. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, He said, I came that you could have life and that you could have it more abundantly. There's nowhere in the New Testament that God says, I want you to barely squeak by life. I want you to live a life of drudgery. I want life to be hard for you. But He talked about abundant life, a life of overflowing. But a question you and I have to ask is this. Are we positioned for God's blessings? Are you positioned personally when it comes to the God of the universe to bring blessing in and upon your life? Turn to Malachi chapter 3, and I want you to listen to the reading of the Holy Word of God. For I am the Lord, I change not, beginning in verse 7. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers you are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings? You're cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Listen carefully pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the fields, saith the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now in this one passage of Scripture, what is God doing? God is speaking through Malachi, and he is saying, I want you to understand, priest of God, leaders of the nation, that you have moved yourself out of the position of being blessed. God is indicting leadership, and he's indicting the whole nation, saying, I want you to understand that you have moved away from being blessed, and you're out of position to receive the blessings of God. God said, I want you to understand, you've gone away from my ordinances, you decided that it's not important to obey my word, and what God is doing is this. He is evaluating an entire nation. He's evaluating leadership, and he is communicating through his prophet, Malachi. He said, I want you to understand why you're unblessable. I want you to understand that you have moved yourself out of a position to be blessed. You see, the thing about it is, we have some really unique ideas. Sometimes in talking to people, I'll um, ask them about uh, their life, and and, uh, sometimes uh, individuals will say something like, well, you know, I just don't believe God wants to bless my life, or, you know, I'm just not one of those that gets all the blessings. I guess that's just my nature in life, or just my lot in life. And on and on, the uh, 
uh, reasons and excuses can go, but here's the reality. God created every one of us, amen? You're not here by happenstance. You didn't evolve. You came by the holy hand of God. And the God who created you does not want you to barely get by, squeak by life. And yet the reality is so many Christians are living a mundane life and they're missing all God's blessings because they simply believe that when God was handing out blessings, you know, they 2,000 years ago, He was giving out the blessings, but God, through the period of time, He's just run out of blessings and He just don't have the same amount of power to give His blessings today. We don't say that, but we think it and we live it out. But I want you to understand that the God who created you wants you to position yourself for His blessings. Why do I say that? Because He is the blesser. Think about it. It doesn't uh, phase God one iota. I mean, He's a God of abundance. He's a God of power. He's a God of grace. And He wants to do in your life, to your life, and for your life beyond what you could imagine or think. Think about it for a moment. If you're a child of God, you're going to go to heaven, and you're going to live there for how long? Forever. There is going to be a world of wonder that you're never going to cease to enjoy. Why? Because God's given you eternal life. And that's the God who created us. But are you positioned for blessings? And so I want you to follow along in your outline because here's what you and I need to understand. In the days of Malachi, they had to understand that they were out of position. And if we're going to uh, position ourselves uh, for blessings, we have to return to blessability. That's the title of this message. Positioning yourself for blessings and returning to blessability. First of all, I want you to understand the outline. You know, whenever God was speaking to Malachi, speaking to an entire nation, here's what God wanted them to understand. You and I have to realize that being positioned for God's blessings is not left up to God, but it's left up to us. You realize whenever God was speaking to the nation of Israel, you know, Malachi, God was indicting the nation, And here's what he said, I want you to understand you've trivialized away my word. And you see, one of the things that happens in our life is when we miss the blessings of God, it doesn't happen by accident, but here's what we do. How many of you would say God's just a trivial figure in the universe? God's just so trivial that he doesn't deserve our attention and our allegiance, and he doesn't deserve a hearing. We don't say that out loud, but let me tell you what we do. Now, you're hearing me speak what? Words. Those words are coming from my being. And whenever someone speaks, if you could write what I'm saying down, it could be written down and you would have a text form of this message. Whenever God speaks, it comes out of the very nature of His being. And one of the things that had happened in Malachi's day and happens in our day and our time is this. We trivialize away the commands of God. We trivialize away what God says. You know, whenever uh, God was speaking to Malachi, he said, I want to show you something. He said, I want you to understand something. You've gone away from my ordinances. Look in verse 7. He said, you have gone away. You have chosen deliberately, intentionally, to go away from my decrees, my commands, my precepts. And that's why you're in a position that you're not being blessed. Listen, you may name the name of Christ. You may say you're saved. You may say, I'm going to heaven. But let me ask you this. Are you trivializing away the commands of God? And you see, when we read a passage of Scripture and we don't want to obey it, we don't want to do it, we don't want to follow it, we're trivializing away God's Word. We're scorning His Word. And the word scorn just simply means we're treating it with disdain. We're we're treating it lightly. And that's what God said to uh, Malachi. He said, I want you to indict the nation because they have lost my blessing. Listen, have we as a nation lost the blessing of God? Eighteen, nineteen trillion dollars in debt. It is now being forecast, September of this year, this is what some prognosticators are saying, the stock market is going to fall. I don't know if that's going to happen. But I can tell you this, if you as a household are in debt over your head, eventually they're going to come and take your home, amen? They're going to eventually come and take your possessions. God said to an entire nation, you've treated my commands with disdain, you've treated me lightly, and there is no way you can be blessed as long as that happens. And the truth about it is, we as Christians, sometimes we're in the front of the line doing that. 
We're in the front of the line by our actions, by our attitude, by the words that we say, by the behavior that we put forth. And God said to Malachi, said, I want you to tell the entire nation, they've lost my blessability because they've treated me with contempt. Let me ask any of you dads. Your son comes home or daughter comes home, and you give them a directive and say, could you help me do this around the house? Or, Mom, you say that. Well, no, Mom, I don't have time for you. And they go on and they do their own thing and... And uh, they're needing a little bit of money. Said, Mom, I need some money. Really? You treat my word with contempt? You treat my voice? You treat me with contempt? You treat me lightly? And then you want to come to me and you want to ask me for money? You want to ask me for resources? Do you really get the clue? God is saying, I want you to understand that person who is blessed is a man, a woman, a young person who takes me seriously. There is nothing more saddening in the world than person uh, who names the name of Christ and takes God lightly. And you see, that's exactly what happened. When you look at Malachi, one thing was mistakably clear. They had removed themselves from the position of being blessed. Now listen, if you think that this message is just an opinion and it's coming from a human being and it's not from the Word of God, then you'll throw it out and, uh, you know, but the truth about it is what I have to say in five cents, well, you used to get a cup of coffee for a nickel, but 50 cents, well, y'all, and a dollar might buy you a small cup of coffee. But listen, God is telling to Malachi, I said, I want you to understand, I want you to communicate why they've lost the blessings. And you know God loves you and me so much, and here's what he says. I want you to understand, sir, ma'am, you're looking at your life, and you look at other people, and the blessings are coming to their life. The blessings are overflowing in their life. What makes the difference? Because it's a man or a woman or a young person who takes seriously the word of the living God. It's a man or woman who takes seriously the ordinances or the commands of God. Let me give you an example. And uh, I know a lot of people have removed from this, but uh, from the time I was a little boy growing up, you know, uh, we didn't work around our house on the Lord's Day. Now, there's a lot of times uh, the yard needed to be mowed, and, and uh, you know, I'd say, Mom said, now, don't you, we don't work on the Lord's Day. And they made that abundantly clear. You know, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Honor the Lord's Day. And uh, all throughout these years, you know, as I've, as I've lived my life, I've thought... If, if I got out and mowed my yard now, I know I'd cut my leg off. I probably wouldn't, but you know, that's, and that's been so etchy. Why? Because it's a directive of God. Now listen carefully. Listen carefully, church. Listen carefully, man, woman of God. Do you think God has changed His Word 2,000 years ago to right now? And He says, you know what, forget what I said in Malachi. No, He still means exactly what He says. And he still expects obedience. And that's why so many people are not being blessed financially. That's why they're not being blessed in relationships. Because they're not treating his word with seriousness. Second of all, not only that, but we need to recognize God's word is God's word. Now think about it for a moment. One of the sad realities as to why so many fail to walk in the goodness of God is simply this. Trivializing the word of God. Let me tell you how we trivialize the word of God. And if you've ever done it, it's a caution to your life. Well, I know what the Bible says, but. Well, I know what God says, but. Or I know I shouldn't do this, but. Do you realize whenever you say, I know what God says, and then you put a but behind it, you're trivializing the Word of God. If I ask you, I said, let's not pay any attention to God. Let's ignore God. You would say, Pastor, no, 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 we don't do that. But here's the way we do. We trivialize it because we don't even get into His Word. We don't even know what His Word says. We don't know what His Word says about relationships. We don't know what His Word says about marriage. We don't know what His Word says because we we don't take Him serious. And when you look in Scripture, you find that here's an entire nation of people. God has said, you've ignored, you've gone away, and uh, you have treated my Word with... Uh, triviality, you treated it with lightness, you've treated it with disdain. And listen, when you recognize God's Word as God's Word, and you say, what? Honey, I know what you say, but I know what God says. I know what you say, but I'm going to obey the Lord God. Can I tell you that this, and I want to say this especially to young couples. If you're a young husband or a young wife, young, uh, young dad, young mother, 
You price, place a premium on this book. Now, if you struggle reading the King James Version, then get a New American Standard Version, which is a wonderful, wonderful translation. Or a New International Version, two translations that I've used different times. But here's, here's the point. We trivialize because we don't even have time for it. You see, here's what happens. You do what is important to you. And the nation of Israel, Judah, the leaders, they just didn't have time to obey the Word of God. Now, it's not that they didn't have time. They chose not to. You know why? Because sometimes obedience is challenging. Let me give you an example. When I came to Williamsburg, Kentucky, I was sitting in a house and sitting at home in Catlettsburg, Kentucky. It meant complete adjustment, traveling 200 miles. And you see, if you're going to be blessed, now I want you to listen. If you're going to experience the bounty, the blessing of God, it don't come without paying serious attention to what God says in His Word. Listen, He's not going to hurt you. How would the one who gave His only begotten Son to die on the cross so you could have everlasting life, how would He even want to hurt you or mess your life up? But you know what we say? Well, you know what? I know if I follow God, He may just mess my life up. And, do, and what we say is, He may lead me to do something that I hadn't planned in life to do. I hadn't planned to be a preacher. At the age of 14, if you say, Are you going to be a preacher? No. If you said, uh, Are you ever going to pastor a church? And I said, No way. My dad's a pastor, I know it. Business meetings and all that and everything. But here's the point. Do you want God to overshadow your life with blessing? And you see, the thing about it is, is there is no option. You don't get to pick and choose, well, I want, I want to obey God on this, and I want to obey God on that. I don't really want to obey God on this other. You see, we, we like to pick and choose out of the Bible. We like to pick and choose what is user-friendly because we enjoy it. But sometimes, like asking forgiveness, we don't want to go to somebody and say, you know what, I bought you to ask you to forgive me. But I'll tell you what, asking forgiveness is a wonder of keeping relationships right. But second of all, recognize God's Word is God's Word. You know, whenever you decide you don't want to obey the Word of God, can I say this? Listen carefully. That in itself brings the curses of God upon your life. I want you to turn back to the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy real quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I want you to look in verses 15. Deuteronomy 15, 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, meaning it will become a living reality, God speaking to the nation of Israel through Moses his servant. It shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What's God saying to the nation of Israel? He said, I want you to understand, you opt out and you decide you don't want to listen to me anymore. You decide you don't want to obey me. And you're going to find your life cursed. How many of you, when you was a kid, you didn't want to listen to your parents? Your parents didn't know what they was talking about. You know... And, and your parents said, I want you to do this. And you didn't want to listen to them. And the truth about it is, as you grew up, you found out, hey, it's amazing how smart they were and how much knowledge they gained as you got a little bit older. And here's the reality. They knew what's best for your life. And here's what God says. I know what's best for your life. I want you to understand that my commands are not hard. They're not designed to mess your life. They're designed to, for you to experience life at its best as you listen to me. And God told Malachi, I said, I want you to understand, I want you to relate to the people. Don't trivialize my word. In other words, it's, listen, this book has been around long before you and I got here because God's eternal. And His word is going to last forever. And if I treat His word lightly, He knows it. If I treat His word trivially, He knows it. If I open up his word and I say, Lord, as best I know in my heart, I'm trying to obey. Do you realize he'll cause? Listen, he will initiate, cause, and bring into your life his bounty, his best, and his wonder. That's who he is. And so, second of all, recognize God's word is God's word. And then, readily hear God's indictment with the spirit of repentance. 
Have you ever had somebody to come into your life and say, you know what, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you've done this to me. I've had that to happen a few times, and, and uh, what hurts worse is if it's your wife. So now I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I want you to think about what you just said. Whenever my wife does that, I never did like that. But you know what? If I say, well, you know what, you're just always wrong. No. When I sit and I listen to the indictment, it carries a different weight. Now listen carefully. I want you to listen. Are you listening? Say amen. I did that for a reason. I don't like to hear the indictment of the Lord. Do, you don't like to hear the indictment of the Lord. But here's the, God is not getting ready to mess our lives up by convicting us of sin. He is not out to hurt us when He convicts us or indicts us. God told the nation of Israel, I'm going to tell you the truth about your life. You go to the doctor and in that waiting room in that uh, uh, doctor's uh, office and you know, you go in here, here's what he says. I want to tell you, if you'll make these adjustments in your life, you'll get healthy. And so you listen to what he says, one, two, three, four, five. And you walk outside and say, well, you know, that's just his opinion. He don't know what he's talking about. He just went to medical school. I know about my life, I, you know, and we can do that. And we can take the same approach with the Word of God. You know, I know what's best for my life. As your life comes crashing down around you, as everything you look at is friendships, relationships, and people who you thought once loved you, they turn against you, and all sorts of things. And you see what God was saying to Malachi, I said, I want you to listen to me. I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm going to tell you the truth. And first of all, God told them the truth about what they were doing with their finances. Now, you know, whenever God is speaking to them, He said, I want to tell you, you've robbed me. Now, whenever God is speaking to them, here's what he says. I want, you to, I want you to own up to the fact that you've robbed me, that you've turned away from me, and you've used your, your money on your own, own stuff. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever committed a felony? Now, don't answer that out loud. I don't need to know that. don't want to know that. But there's a point that when you steal so much money, it's labeled a felony. You know, if you take something that belongs to somebody else. And what God was saying to the, to the nation, what God was saying to the leadership, I want to tell you, you have committed a felony against me. In my divine court, I find you guilty. In the court of holy God, you're found guilty and I indict you. And you see, the truth about it is, God was simply speaking the truth to a nation that had gone away. And the reality of it is, is God is indicting them to bring them back to Him. And you know, the reality is why so many people miss out of the blessings of God is they don't want to hear the indictment. They don't want to go to the doctor, so to speak. They don't want to go to the chief surgeon of their life and say, you know what, my life is all full of pus and gangrene and all sorts of junk. And Lord God, I need you to do radical surgery on my life. No, what we do, we just like to keep on having that poison go through our life. And eventually we die. We may die prematurely. Because we don't want to hear the indictment of God. Now, with that being said, I want to ask you a question. Has God ever indicted you financially? Would God come over your life and say, Sir, ma'am... Would you rob God? You say, well, I know God, we wouldn't rob you, but you've robbed me. In the divine court of my holy justice, you've robbed me. Well, have we robbed you, Lord? You've robbed me in tithes and offerings. Whenever a time comes for you to worship me through tithes and offerings, you steal from me, says the Lord. You steal from me, says the Lord God Almighty. And God said, Here's why I'm indicting you. And you see, God was reminding them He had been watching. He was reminding them that He had been seeing their life. And God made it very clear. He said, I want you to repent. He said, you're cursed with a curse. Can I tell you this? In 30 years plus of being a pastor, some people think that they're getting by. 
I've watched God countless times take, take people's money from them. More times than I can count. It's taken by going to the hospital. Radical, radical, long hospital stays. And they spend their life savings. They spend their money. They had a nest egg laid up. And God just slowly but surely wheedles it away. Why? Because they've been robbing God. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would think about going to Walmart and stealing the cash register? None of us. But sometimes we have no thought about stealing from God. We have no problem taking what belongs to God and claiming it for ourselves. And God said, I'm indicting you. You're found guilty. Now listen carefully. Whenever you say, well, that's awfully hard. Yes, it is. But here's the thing about it. We have to listen we have to hear his indictment if we're going to receive his blessing. Would you be bold enough, wise enough, smart enough to say to before the Lord, Lord, I'm looking at my life and I'm looking at my finances. Man, I've left you out in the cold. I've made a good living, but I've been a thief before God. You say, Pastor, I just don't believe in tithing. That's your opinion. That's your personal opinion. It's not the Word of God. Your opinion don't trump the Word of God. God says, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. First Corinthians. And here's the point. You can use a lot of other things, but here's what God was saying. I want you to realize you have gone this way missing the blessings. I didn't create you not to bless you. But you know what happens, parents, when your children are acting a certain way? You stop the money coming, don't you? To get their attention. And so God says, I, I want to get your attention. And you see, the truth about it is, whenever God was speaking to the nation, He said, I want you to understand my indictment. I want you to hear it. And then, fourthly, refuse to sidestep your personal responsibility. Now, listen carefully. God told a nation, I want you to be blessed. I love Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2, and I read it a lot. All these blessings shall come upon you, overshadow you, and overtake you, if you listen carefully to all that I say and do what I tell you to do, says the Lord. And, and here's the point. God wants to bless. But am I positioned for blessings? And you see... You know, there's one vital key to continued blessability. And I want to tell you this. This happens in a pastor's life, my life as a dad, my life as a husband, my life as a man. First of all, Lord, is my relationship right with you? Is there anything in my heart that is, that is not right? Do I have any unforgiveness, any ill will? Is there anything in my life? Am I, have I said anything to my wife out of the way? Have I said anything to my daughter out of the way? Have I done something to anyone? You know why? Because I want the blessings of God. Amen? And the truth about it is, you can't sidestep your responsibility. If I hurt my daughter, I'll ask her to forgive me. If I hurt my wife, I'll make sure I apologize. Why? Because I tell you what, there's nothing that can take the place of the blessing of God. And yet, we try to get whatever we can get out of life. Well, you know what? I'm satisfied with just a little bit of money, resources. I don't know about you, but man, I love the joy of the Lord. Amen? The joy of the Lord, David said, is my strength. You know, there's nothing like just going around and enjoying the, the joy of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the wonder of the Lord. Sometimes when I go into continue care, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but uh, I'll be making rounds and I'll see Kevin down the hall and he'll go into a room and he'll start singing Amazing Grace or some song or he'll come up the hall. You know, he never does ask me to join him. But uh, no, he, he loves blessing those people. But here's the point. There's a million blessings that you can't buy. You can't buy a good, clean conscience. You can't buy a good night's rest. You can buy the best tempur Simmons, beauty rest, but when you go to bed at night, you can't buy a good, clean conscience where you're right with God and right with others, and you go off to sleep. And what God was saying to the entire nation, I want for you blessings. And then he said, I want to prove it to you. And, and, and you and I have to accept our responsibility. Listen, if you think you can just put it on coast 
And everybody's got to get out of the way for you. Get out of the way. I'm coming through. Everybody, you just have to understand who I am. Friend, you're going to die with the curses of God upon your life. Because it's a wise man, a wise woman, a wise boy or girl who says, you know what? I've got a serious responsibility before God. And so lastly, respond with obedience and anticipate His blessings to come. Do you hear what I just said? And it's there. Watch, watch the text. Look at the text. He says in verse 10, Essence is respond in obedience, bring the tithe into the storehouse, become blessable, and prove me. Put me to the acid test. In other words, God says, you don't believe I'll do it, test me. You don't believe I'll bless you, watch me. And what God is saying is, I want you to position yourself, treat my word seriously, treat me seriously, and then you watch if I don't move heaven for you. I want you to look at a verse, and I want you to notice what it says, because it's talking about you and talking about me. Verse 10. That bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open, what's the next word? You. I will open for you a blessing. Listen, God's not up in heaven saying, go to church, get religion, and then go about your life, do whatever you... Watch and see what I will do. I own the heavens, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Listen, you say, well, you know, if the Lord owns everything that is, and I'm in dire need, you know, the Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and if he needs some money, if he needs some money, he knows how to get it. He knows how to bring it. And, uh, and the reality of it was, is God said to Malachi, I said, I want you to tell the people to test me. Prove me. Put me to the acid test and see if I don't come through into and for your life. And can I tell you, as a pastor and as a husband, as a dad, it's awesome what God can and will do into and for your life that you'd ever anticipate. Now, I know that Men, you brag on your wives, and I have a little bit different platform. But I want to tell you what my mother said about that lady sitting back there. She said, Benny, you could have searched the earth and never found one any better. I didn't know where she was. I had no clue. I went to Texas looking for her, but she wasn't there. I went to 17 churches in Whitley County before I went to the church where she was. She wasn't there. Now listen carefully. If God knows you're serious about walking with Him, He'll move heaven and earth for your life. You believe that? Do you really believe it? Not many amens, were there? And you know why? Could it be that you look at your life and you say, Pastor, I don't see blessings coming in my life. As a good surgeon would come to you and say, you're going to have to have radical surgery if you're going to be healthy again. Some of you need to do some radical things in your life if you're going to experience the blessings of God again. Now, there are some forks in the road that you can take that will alter the life, your life for the rest of it. And what you do with this message may be one of them. You see, you decide, will I or won't I? Will I listen to what God said to my heart, or will I just keep on going? You can do with your life what you choose. But can I tell you this? The blessings of God come to those who say, I'm serious about walking with God. If you're a teenager and you say, Pastor, I'm serious about walking with God, you watch what he does in your life. He'll bring heaven and earth into your life. Why? Because that's what he says. And you see, the truth about it is, the God who created us, he wants his best for your life. But here's a question that every one of us have to ask. Lord, am I positioned to be blessed? And the greatest blessing that God gives is the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. You see... A lot of people are going to die and go to hell. Most people will die and go to hell. The masses of people will die without Jesus. Not that God wants them to. But probably they just don't believe hell is what it really is. A real literal place of fire and brimstone. 
They don't believe that it is what God has said in His Word, a place of outer darkness, until they open their eyes. And the truth about it is, they don't take God seriously. The biggest trick that the devil pulls on your life and mine is, just don't take God seriously. Just don't take His Word seriously. Just keep on living the way you're living. You're just, the, your station in life is just the way it's supposed to be, and you're not going to get any more blessings. That's a lie straight out of hell. I'm going to give you a promise. If you're not walking with God today, you choose today. Lord, I'm going to start walking with you. I'm going to obey you. And then one year from now, watch what God does. You don't even have to wait a year. If you're not tithing, start doing it today. And in one month, if God doesn't bless you in ways, I'll let you stand on this platform and say, Pastor, you're not a, you don't speak the truth. You lied. Here's why I can say that. I know my father, and I know what he does. And he says, test me, Benny. Prove me, Benny. See, if I will not open the doors and pour out upon you, the issue is, what will you do? Will you position yourself for God's blessings? Or will you just continue going this way? Father, we thank you so much.